Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis, and this is The Daily Brief. So a lot has happened since last night, and normally I would start here and talk about the 890 Russians off the battlefield, the uh, 20 armored combat vehicles off the battlefield, 63 vehicles and fuel tanks, but it seems weird talking about that. And it's not like things in Ukraine haven't continued to be hot. Like, if you look at the, just the strikes... Occupation forces inflict two missile, 72 airstrikes, shell more than 110 Ukrainian settlements, and then you see the enemy also mounted 116 attacks on Ukrainian defense positions and settlements using multiple launch rocket systems. It's not like that hasn't been hot. But the world's attention is diverting, I think briefly, to what's going on in Israel and Iran. So here is the Wall Street Journal describing it, an early article describing what just happened as Israel, uh, Iran launched drone attacks on Israel. Just a couple paragraphs. Iran has for days pledged to respond to a suspected Israeli attack on an Iranian diplomatic mission in Syria that killed senior Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps or officers. These were generals. The Revolutionary Guard said that the drones and missiles were part of its planned response, indicating that more might be coming. Iran and Israel have been engaged in shadow war for decades. They really have. They've been trying to undermine each other for a long time. But direct military confrontation has been rare. Saturday's attack will likely trigger an Israeli response and threatens to take Middle East to the brink of war. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said his country was ready to defend against the attack and was prepared to respond. Whoever harms us, we will harm them, Netanyahu said on Saturday night. Okay, and Israeli has had a policy uh, since its foundation of an eye for an eye, and that's been a way of defending itself against hostile nations all around it that want to destroy it, wipe it off the map from the river to the sea, that sort of thing. Okay. Israeli strike on Iran consulate in Syria killed two generals and five other officers. This was April 2nd. So that's one of the triggering events because, well, okay, so they went after uh, Iranian generals because Iran, Iran has been significantly behind uh, supporting those that are at war with Israel right now. And so that was the precipitating factor. Uh, this was a very recent uh article that I saw in Twitter I, as I got up this morning, Israel says 99% of more than 300 Iranian drones, missiles uh, were intercepted, it calls it a significant strategic success. Okay, RT is talking about this. RT, Iran has signaled that the massive strike was a one-time retaliatory action for Israeli actions rather than the beginning of a broader military campaign. Let's see. Uh, punishment of Israel completed, says Tehran. Iran's top military commander has promised more extensive response in case of future attacks by West Jerusalem. So what, what they've been saying here is, okay, so Israel destroyed a Iranian consulate, killed uh, less than a dozen folks. After that, Iran retaliated with 300 missiles and drones and said, if you better not respond or we will do more. We will, like, you can't, like, so this is the way kind of uh, authoritarians roll, right? I mean, Putin does the same kind of thing, where if you do this, then we're going to go do this even more. Okay, but you have to understand that Israel is going to have to respond. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense that they wouldn't respond, but okay, here we are. Uh, Iran launched three, more than 300 drones and missiles toward Israel. First full-scale military assault against the country. U.S. military forces in the region helped Israel intercept strikes. President Biden said U.S., U.K., and France were all involved in that. Um, I, there might have been other European nations as well. Jordan opened up its airspace, for example. Uh, more than 99% of the missiles and drones were intercepted. Israel uh, Defense Forces spokesperson Daniel Hagari said a few fell inside Israeli territory, causing minor damage to a military base and seriously injuring a young girl, they said. Okay, uh, I'll probably do a more extensive overview of this, but separate from what's going on in Ukraine, but still tied to like comparing Ukraine and Israel. But okay, last little bit here from Anton Garashenko. 
Anton Goroshenko said last night's Iranian strikes on Israel, as well as a Hamas attack last October and the war that has erupted in the region, are all consequences of the U.S. and Western world not reacting to Putin's invasion of Ukraine back in 2014. So I'm not sure that the direct line can go to it, but I think there's something to that argument. Because when we yawned in 2014, it only encouraged Putin to come back in 2022. And then some politicians taking a passive stance in supporting Ukraine after Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Churchill reportedly said of politicians who try to negotiate with Hitler, you were given a choice between war and dishonor. You chose dishonor and you will have war. Yeah, I mean, I think there's something significant to that. Iranian strikes, on, like, like you, you simply can't ignore whatever the threat is. And that's that's part of the process of what uh, is happening here with Israel. Iranian strikes on Israel, summary thus far. And again, this is a moving target here, no pun intended. Iran, Iran fired 185 drones, 36 cruise missiles, 110 surface-to-surface -surface missiles during an overnight attack in response to an Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Syria. The attack lasted more than five hours, covering Israeli military bases and government facilities. The IDF and the U.S. president reported that most of the missiles were intercepted. 31 people were injured. 31 people. The United States helped Israel take down nearly all the drones and missiles coming from Iran. President Biden said he also announced an urgent convening of the G7 leaders to coordinate a united diplomatic response to Iran's brazen attack. Israel has requested an emergency meeting of the UN uh, Security Council to, to discuss the situation. Iran issued a statement indicating it would not launch further strikes, but warned Israel against retaliation and the U.S. against any intervention. Of course they did. Yeah, I mean, like, I can hit you, but you can't hit back. Right, okay. Israel authorities have lifted some of the restrictions imposed after the Iranian attack. A military base sustained some damage after an overnight attack. Okay, and that's, that's all that we need to see there. Okay, so that's where we are. I don't know if this is going to continue or not. I'll do a separate video for those that are interested just on what's happened here. And let me shift gears to the last point. Jake Bro posted this on Twitter. Passing discharge petition number nine in the House is the only way forward to get desperately needed military aid to Ukraine. We're at 195 signatures, only 23 more. Here are the likely Democrats that would be persuaded by it. Here are the likely Republicans that would be persuaded to sign. And if we can get, you know, move that up. It can be done. Every signature moves us a step closer to aid for Ukraine. By the way, uh, last night, Jake and I did an interview together. It'll be posted today at 12 Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and the coffees. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.